Nice ash. If you're watching this, you don't realize what just happened. We just went through about a 10 minute diatribe of things and realized that I didn't hit the record sound button. So we're I mean, starting again. It's episode number two. The first one was shot on a phone, on the, on the reverse camera. Now we have lights, we got a microphone, a computer in here recording. It's gonna happen. It, yeah, you sure, know. there's trial and error. And if you were here for the first episode, you're gonna see things look a little different. The first one was rough. We were here, we've been talking about it, and we just said, let's film the first episode, got a phone out, went through it, and that led to this. There was a pretty good response. We got some views, some subscriptions, some positive feedback from people we know, so we're gonna keep going with it. Yeah, and uh, like you said, we got some positive feedback, um, and I had brought back before, when we were recording this episode about 10 minutes ago, yeah. um, that I had some people asking some questions saying that, you know, when, when they're golfing or maybe hanging out with some buddies, maybe, you know, cigars will get passed down, they'll have a couple puffs, but they really don't know what they're smoking, what they like, they, you know, really much about it. They just enjoy smoking a cigar here and there, but they would like to know more. So this episode is kind of a, an intro to cigars, giving you some basic stuff. To be honest, a lot of these can be broken into individual episodes. Yeah, sure. So we're going to be kind of pushing a lot of info just to kind of cover cigars in general. And hopefully when you go to a store on your own after watching this, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable and kind of know what you're there for. Yeah, so this is pretty much dedicated to the beginner. This is, if you feel uncomfortable walking into a cigar store and asking these questions, we're gonna try and help you out as much here as possible. But as long as you're here, please hit the subscribe button. Please click the like button. Feel free to leave a comment, give us some feedback. All we ask is that you be respectful. And, you know, oh, we gotta repeat what we did the last time because we got word from the front yeah. that if you do not subscribe, the American bald eagle and and some unicorns are going to be are going to be completely extinct. Yeah. So we need your help on this matter before it becomes a national emergency. Yeah, we're going to need your help. Please subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. Everything, Save everything. Save the unicorns and the eagles. And hit that little bell too, because you know we're not on a set recording schedule yet, so you're going to want to be notified when we put up new content because we're having a blast doing this. I think you're going to enjoy it too. Absolutely. So. Let's restart. We, All right. uh, so we were talking about cutting the cigars first, obviously, because yes. when you get a cigar, it's all wrapped up nicely, and if it's a premium cigar, it's going to have a cap on top of it, which means that it will need to be chopped open. Yes. So we were both talking about how our preferred cutters tend to be the V-cut. Yeah, we both like the V-cut. Any, uh, any reason specifically that you like this one? I personally I just like the V cut because it narrows down your area where you're drawing the smoke in through so you don't have that whole wide thing I like it a little bit more concentrated and it's a little bit cleaner cut there's not a lot of tobacco that comes out on that and just for some reason that little divot that it cuts in there gives you a little bit more better airflow and I absolutely agree with that that's what I would say it definitely concentrates the flavor a little bit more almost a, a, of a cheating way to help kind of fill up the body sometimes on some lighter cigars oh yeah absolutely that's oh. a good point so yeah I definitely I tend to use the Vika another one that you will have and you may be more familiar with uh, maybe if not like this you'll you've seen the kind of the, the guillotine or guillotine cutters with the two fingers that you pinch um, this will just give you a straight cut right on the back of the cap there uh, the biggest thing that I will say with a V-cut, you don't have to worry about it quite as much because they do have a backing. With your regular straight cut, it's going to be able to go right through. You want to make sure that you're just clipping above that cap line because it's that cap that's actually holding the wrapper leaf together. Yeah, you cut too much, your cigar is probably going to wind up unraveling and it's not going to be smokable. You're just going to have a mess. Yeah, and then you had a little tip that you were talking about last time. Yeah, because we discussed that when you're doing a straight cut, and you're unsure of how far down to go to cut because you don't want to cut that cap completely off. So something that I learned early on when I started in this hobby is if you lay your cutter flat on the table and put the cigar in there and just push it in until the cap of the cigar touches the table and you got the perfect distance to cut. Yeah, so that works, that'll get you trimmed up and then the next thing that obviously we need to talk about is lighting the cigar because there's a process with that as well that most people really won't Absolutely. think of. Like I wouldn't have thought of it. As soon as I grabbed the cigar, I think the first thing I did was inhale as much as possible, draw on it, try to torch it up yeah. and get it rolling. Yeah, so, right. um, the biggest thing with that is that you want to start out toasting the foot of the cigar because what you're doing is you're heating up the tobacco slowly. You're, you're kind of warming it up 
Um, you're helping it to burn a little bit more evenly because it's not obviously one big solid chunk of tobacco. There's right. a bunch of leaves in there. There's air in between. So if you can toast it around, what I do is I actually I toast around the outside a little bit more and I yes. kind of work my way towards the middle. I found that that does help me out with getting a sure, getting yeah. burn going. So that's kind of my biggest thing. And you'll, you'll, basically, you'll find if you don't toast it, like Christian was saying, and, and you want to toast as much of the air as possible, if you just go ahead and light it, you're going to think that you're getting a complete light, but you'll find that your cigar is going to burn unevenly. You're going to have more burn on one side than the other. The wrapper is going to burn completely unevenly. It'll start canoeing, so to speak, where it'll burn down the center and just leave it. So, yeah, it's just preparation. And, again, this is not something you're just going to automatically know if you've never done this before. So, again, that's why we're here. We don't want you to be afraid to ask. Preference in lighter or way to light? Uh, preference in lighter. I like a butane torch absolutely absolutely i agree and, and that is a big thing too yeah butane you want to use um not something with like zippo lighter fluid or anything like that you will get kind of an aftertaste with it yes um and you, you have your options you have you know your triple or your quad burners like this you also have your single flame which i i prefer the single flame myself just because i find i can be a little bit more accurate with it does take a little bit more time, yeah. you know, but I, I don't know. I find that sometimes I, I do kind of over toast or over roast. So I'll get a little bit more of a bitter flavor with this. So I guess I'm a little heavy handed. Yeah. You, and if you're you, like, I use a multi-torch uh, lighter. So if you, when you do that, you have to be more careful oh, because yeah. if you burn your wrapper, if you burn your tobacco as you're lighting it, you're going to get that bitter taste and it's not going to be the experience you're looking for. But you know, the, the important thing to remember is never use a traditional lighter fluid lighter. Exactly. Exactly. Now, one thing, um, most people they may think we're talking about like don't use a bic whereas a bic is butane it's a soft flame but it's not like a zippo where you're actually using a lighter fluid that right. is something that yes. is different so if you have a bic most likely you're good to go it's using a soft flame which will um it'll take you a little bit longer some people some people only use a soft flame as well you know they find themselves being more traditional yeah if they want to even matches sometimes which i've tried yeah and i mean, I've wouldn't match so many matches myself trying to do that yeah. i don't have that patience but you know teach your own everybody has their preference um yeah wooden match like that. if you and if you ever decide you want to use a wooden match fine but just an important thing to remember is when you light it, let the scent of the sulfur burn off before you touch it to the cigar. Because that's the problem with lighter fluid is you don't want anything contaminating the taste of your tobacco on a cigar. Because it's about flavor, it's about aroma. That's why we smoke these things, and you, you just want the pure tobacco. Yeah. So um, on top of that, so we did. You know, you got your lighters, you got your matches. So you got one more thing. Right one last thing. This is a piece of Spanish cedar and you'll find if you buy a box of cigars a lot of manufacturers will put sheets of this inside the cigar boxes just because this is the preferred way to store cigars you know humidors all are lined with Spanish cedar and a lot of better cigar brands will put this in there so we at the shop here just when we get these in the boxes we just break them up into little strips keep them in a little cup and if anybody ever wants to use this to light a cigar it, it's it's a great scent when it burns and it actually accents the cigar that you're smoking. Absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, is it time for us to toast up now? I would say definitely yes. Oh, you know what we forgot? About. One wrestling, we got to talk about the punch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about all the different cutting types, and I'm just going to go over this quickly because this isn't complicated. This is a Zycar punch, and I like the Zycar brand just because of the lifetime guarantee. Anything ever fails, you bring it back, it gets repaired or replaced. But basically all you do with this is you pull out this little circular blade. You see it's just a very fine edge. You're going to take your cigar and find the center and just lightly twist it down until the blade get all, gets all the way in and you hit the base of the punch. And then you just pull it out, snap this close, it'll eject a little piece of cigar and you've got a nice small concentrated area to draw your smoke through. And I will say those are great for if you do have something box pressed like this that has kind of a flatter cap. To be honest, I probably should have used it because I decided to be stubborn and go with my V, <laughs> uh, my v cut as usual. And um, it creates pressure because of the weird kind of pressure points of the corners there. Yeah. And I actually cracked a little bit of my cap and some of the wrapper leaf. I mean, off. that's not good that that happened, but that just reminded me of something that I learned recently from, okay. from Greg. Um, if you take a cigar and you're getting ready to cut it and you notice that the cap or the wrapper or anything on that end is dry, just touch your tongue to it. Just give it a tiny bit of moisture, it'll soften it up. 
and when you cut, you're going to not have as high a risk of it cracking or falling off. Just don't do that when you're borrowing somebody else to cut it. That is correct. Because <laughs> <laughs> in, in which case, yeah, maybe you might want to not do that, but no, that is a great idea. I've heard that before. Yeah. Um, I probably am going to start making sure that I do that now so this doesn't happen again. Yeah, yeah, I do that pretty regularly now, and I haven't had an issue since. All right, well, let's get to toasting. Man. All right. We've been talking about it a lot. Let's see. So what are you smoking over there? I have a diesel, and the label of the cigar, its model is called the Unholy Cocktail. All right. Now, uh, is that something deeper, something you recommend uh, to a more distinguished smoker? Is that light? Is something that it's definitely not white. Yeah. It's definitely not white. It's definitely full flavor. So I would say if you're just starting, you might want not want to go in this direction. It might be a little too harsh for you. But uh, I, I grabbed this one day at, when I was working. I wanted something to smoke, but I was leaving pretty shortly, and I wanted something that wouldn't last hours. And I just saw this and grabbed it, and I was unbelievably pleased with it. Mm. Now, one thing, too, that you may notice when I'm uh, lighting it up is you see me kind of blowing on the cherry. That'll kind of help you out because you can see, actually, where you burnt in the darker areas may need a little bit more flame time on yeah. them. So that'll definitely help you kind of get it lit up properly. Um, I, myself, over here, I have a Man of War Ruination 10th Anniversary. Oh, I love those. Oh, yeah, these things are great. Uh, definitely not a beginner cigar. I would yeah. say. A lot, a lot of kick to them, a lot of punch, a good amount of spice. Um, I just enjoy it, though. I, yeah. I know it's something that will uh, definitely leave me satisfied. And you'll find that if you're if you're just getting into it and starting out, I always recommend starting out with something light. And you'll find that the more you smoke, the more your flavor profile is going to change, the more your taste buds change. And I started out with light cigars, and honestly, the first time I ever smoked a cigar was a light one. I got lightheaded, I got the buzz off of it, I felt like, wow. And then after, you know, a few months, it didn't take long, but I'm like, this just isn't doing it for me anymore. i got to step up the flavor. No, I get you. I get you. Um, I went a little bit different of a route when I started smoking cigars. Um, I don't know. Question. Did you ever smoke cigarettes? Never did, no. Wondering, okay, see, I was a cigarette smoker. So, I, and I have noticed that when you talk to other guys that have smoked cigarettes before, which I, I, I have quit. I have Good. moved on to better things. Um, but I, I started out liking things that were a little bit more heavy. You know, okay, that makes sense. didn't really have enough for me even starting out, which is why it's kind of great. We both kind of picked some stuff for like a beginner smoker. Yeah, right. kind of had two angles to it. So Yeah. Um, what was kind of your first pick that you, uh, that you brought out here? Uh, my first pick, and I tried one of these. We had uh, the rep for Ash and Cigars came in, and San Cristobal is one of the uh, – one of the brands that Ash and Cigars carry, and this is the Elegancia. Okay. And this is on the on the potency scale of one to five. Obviously, one being the weakest, five being the strongest. This is a three, but I got one of these as a sample from the rep, and it was so smooth and so light. Okay. The flavor was just absolutely unbelievable, but it wasn't harsh at all. Gotcha. So even though I prefer a fuller flavor cigar. I'd be happy with something like this just because the flavor is so good. It doesn't need to hit you that hard. Gotcha, gotcha. And then my first one that I went that I, I tried to stick towards the more mellow side of things, although they, they do have it listed as almost like a medium body. Um, it is the Tatuaje, I don't know if it's pronounced Monopoly, the Monopole. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, you're going to find a lot of way. odd names on cigars and you're yeah. going to it, it is um, it's their Ecuadorian Connecticut wrap, which you'll notice in general, um, they will say, you know, your Connecticut, your Ecuadorian Connecticut, or your actual Connecticut shade, um, is it's going to be a little bit more mild body for you, a little bit more smooth, a great beginner cigar. But they use Nicaraguan tobacco for the binder and the filler of this, yeah. which will kind of punch it up and give you a little bit more body. Right. Um, this one I found as well was extremely smooth and creamy, but did have a, a little bit more body to it, which yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. So that that's my Connecticut shape pick, I guess. Yeah. So and the next one there. But this San Cristobal, the first one I talked about, is uh, Connecticut Broadleaf. Oh, okay. And this one, the, my second one here, is a Macanudo. And this is a Connecticut wrapper. This is a much lighter colored wrapper. But, you know, I, while I talk about that, I, I got to mention this really quick. There's, there's basically the way I break up cigars is Connecticut's and Maduro's. I look at light wrappers and dark wrappers. And when you look at the cigars side by side, you instinctively, I think, think such a dark wrapper is probably going to be really strong. Yeah. And that's not necessarily the case. I, I find that Maduro's can be just as light, absolutely, 
but with the darker wrapper, the flavor is richer. Than yeah, the lighter it's definitely wrapper. deeper, a little deeper. more rounded, I guess. I, I yeah, know you would say. So not necessarily strong, but richer. But because oh, sorry, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say one thing, uh, or one brand I definitely noticed that with, I would say, is Padron. Because yeah. I, I enjoy Padron, uh, the 1926 is one of my favorites. Um, I like the Maduro, I, you know, it's deep, it's rich, it's got some spice to it. I had the Natural, which is a little bit lighter of a wrapper, but that thing had spice. That thing yeah. was almost oh, eye-watering. Yeah. So the Natural in that line actually kicks it up a little bit more than the than the Maduro will. Right. And this Macanudo, this is an Inspirado, the green label. This is, again, is a very mild Connecticut, a great place to start. And you, you know, you're gonna pick milder cigars, but don't be afraid to pick cigars with flavor. This has got a little bit of spice. It's got a little bit of a woodsy taste, a nutty taste. You'll get a bit of a little creamy cocoa in there. And it's just the things I like. Even though I don't smoke Macanudos a lot because they are too light for me, but the one thing that I find about them is that beginning to end, the flavor stays consistent, and I think that's really important. Nice, nice. Now my next pick is. Different, you know. I went, started off with the Connecticut, a little more mellow. I actually did pick Padron, but uh, I picked the Padron Thousand Series. So this isn't necessarily their 1926 super heavy hitters. It's, it's going to be. Uh, I, I, don't, I hate to even say the word budget stick because it's such a good value. It, oh yeah, it's just, for a Padron. The yeah. Padron Thousand Series. It's it's a good cigar for somebody starting out. I mean, I, I still smoke them all the time. Um, they have the Maduro, they have the natural, and it's going to be a little more full body than what they would tell most beginner right, uh, yeah. smokers to have. But I found, you know, as a beginner, uh, the Padron 1000 series is actually one of my favorite cigars. Nice. And what's that third one you got there? I only picked um, out two because I don't smoke a lot of light cigars. This so. one I threw out as a wild card um, it, because it has a sweetened tip. It is an infused cigar. Uh, it is the Tabac Especial. Which is oh, okay. another Connecticut wrap cigar, but uh, I believe the binder and the filler is Nicaraguan. Uh, my wife loves these, by the way. I, I enjoy them with the coffee. These things are great. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of my wild card if you're not sure what you want to pick, or maybe you want something that has a little bit more flavor that you can pull from it. Because sometimes when you're just starting out, you know, people are talking about all these nutty, woodsy, deep yeah. chocolate, cocoa, coffee, you know, and you go light it up and you're like, that just tastes like smoke to me. Yeah, well, it takes you know, a while. Something uh, infused, and especially with a sweetened cap, you'll you'll get flavor out of it. You'll understand, you know, what's going on, and it definitely is a nice little little boost there. I would say for somebody just starting out. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what would you recommend to somebody starting out as far as you know when you're actually smoking the cigar? And this is something that I saw. <laughs> There's rules, right. so to speak. Okay. Uh, so when I first started watching videos years ago when I got into this hobby, I saw some that said when you smoke a cigar, you want between 60 and 90 seconds between each puff. Okay. So you're not going to sit there and literally watch yeah, your watch yeah. tick is, by. This is, this is very good that you bring that up, though, um, especially as a former c cigarette smoker. Yeah. Where it's kind of like you puff away, if there's a work break, this, that, and a third, like you're just you're trying to get your cigar or cigarette in because it's more of a habit. You got to get that nicotine. Yeah. A, a cigar is to relax, it's to enjoy. Yeah, that's um, right. When you do smoke it too fast, again, we, we talked about toasting it and letting it kind of warm up and heat up. When you smoke on it and you puff on it too fast, you're going to get that bitter taste. Yeah, it overheats. You're going to get a of tar in there, so it overheats. Yep. I do try to say, you know, one puff per minute right around there, give or take a little bit, is yep. probably the, a good rate to keep it burning and keep it rolling for it. That's what I try to. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, when you're, like, like Christian said, when you're sitting and relaxing and you're having a cigar, you're going to find that you're just not in a rush to back and forth and puff on it you just enjoy it get the flavor because that's what these things are about you know i you, you're really this is a much stronger tobacco than you get in cigarettes but it's also a more natural thing there's not all the chemicals and toxins and things so when you enjoy a cigar you're enjoying it for flavor you're enjoying it for aroma you're not doing this to get that nicotine hit to get the the buzz and whatever else this is this is an enjoyment so you don't want to actually inhale this into your lungs because this is again is going to be much stronger. This is just drawing the smoke into your mouth, getting the flavors, enjoying it, getting the aroma, and then releasing it. Now, one thing that we haven't talked about um, that I would have never known about if I didn't do the YouTube and the Googling and whatnot is the retro hail. Do you retro hail your cigars? I can't. Okay. Okay. I have found that whatever the deal is with my sinuses, 
I can't get the smoke to come out my nose. Now, in case you don't know what we're talking about, yeah, like, like you just said, it's when you, you inhale, well, not inhale, but you get the smoke in your mouth, you blow some of it out, and then you blow some of it out through your nose um, because there are some olfactory sensors out yes. there that'll pick out different flavors, which um, one of my favorite parts of smoking cigars is when you get one that has a lot of spice to it. And yeah. It kicks like oh, that. Yeah. And when you retrohale, you feel that. You, yes. You will, get, you will pick up a lot of that spice. So... Um, I don't do it every time, but you know, every every three or four puffs, so every you know, three or four minutes, I will give it kind of a push out through my nose there, and I get a lot more of that spice and flavor, and, and the, some of the undertones, I guess they would say. Yeah. Not that I'm a pro at picking out those undertone things. For me, it's more, mainly like, is there spiciness to it? Some of the darker ones, you will get a little bit more cocoa, a little more coffee flavors to it, and that's about as deep as I go when it comes to picking out the undertones. I don't get your grapefruit or your lollipop stuff coming yeah, out. That people, right. you know, they read these reviews and you're like, what cigars are they smoking that they're getting that? I don't get it. But yeah, I mean, even though I can't get that smoke to go out my nose, when I try to retrohale, I still, the sensors in your nose, I still get flavors that I'm not getting just through right. drawing the smoke in my mouth. So I, I can use it to pick up a few more things, but I don't get the full effect from it. I wish I did. It was something I'd, something I'd like to enjoy a little bit more. Now, one thing I brought out here, kind of as a, a little bit of a hack, um, just in case you know, you're know you a newer cigar smoker, maybe you picked out something that was just a little bit too strong for you, and you are getting a little bit of what they call it, that, that nicotine sickness. What will counterbalance that is sugar. So what I recommend to just about anybody really is that somewhere get you a little bit of candy just have some i, I have some these reese's stashed in my locker over there uh i know the, the you know original thing is sugar cubes that they used to do you know people would put a yeah. sugar cube under their tongue um just because you know you raise your your uh blood sugar level a little bit and it'll actually get rid of that sickness in like a couple of minutes there oh, okay so, I, and I didn't know that that's a great that's tip. a little bit of my hack there another thing is have something to drink even if it's just water coffee you know your favorite adult beverage something along with that it yeah. really pairs nicely with the cigar I, I mostly drink water myself with it oh yeah but yeah I mean, other people coffee is great as well i heard the most bizarre thing from a newer member that i signed up recently and they told me that orange crush brings out really? the flavor of any cigar that that's a new one you know what a lot of people say is dr pepper oh wow. i hear a lot of people say dr pepper is great with cigars as well so. But yeah, I mean, that's something I think we're going to cover in a future episode. It's like, we're not, this isn't uh, an alcohol serving lounge. We don't have a license to serve alcohol. But when you're at home, when you're on the patio, if you want to grab a nice glass of bourbon or a whiskey or beer or anything like that, and coffee, we're going to talk about pairing cigars with different drinks to get the most out of putting two things together. Now, I did have some notes, so... Don't mind me, I'm going to check out my phone to make sure that I do kind of cover everything that I wanted. Because I didn't want to, there were a couple questions I had. Let me see. Toasting, we went over. Sugar, we went over our picks. Okay. Full strength versus full body. What does that mean to you? To me, full body is when you just get a full spectrum of flavors. Okay. When you smoke the cigar and you, you just get everything culminating all at once in every puff full strength is the spice the bite the 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 richness of the tobacco okay okay and now i have a little bit different review for that just from what i but again that that's why i wanted to ask you yeah just get such different things from different people for me i look at something that's more full bodied as like the actual smoke itself is full body like a thickness of smoke versus yeah like that's a good point a, a yeah thinner, and then like the strength to me I, I see like the nicotine content with that and then i and I, I kind of played this unfair because i also have a little third category which i would say is more of a full flavored cigar so i kind of break it down into a full body strength which i kind of rate you know the actual nicotine strength of the cigar and then i have the full flavor which is kind of that spectrum of you know what you're actually yep. pulling out of it so I just wanted to bring that up and kind of get your opinion. That's a good question, though, because, yeah, and everybody, I think, will have their own opinion on that, and I, I don't necessarily know that there is a completely right or completely wrong answer. It's it's how you approach your own cigars. So, yeah, that's that's a good question. And that's the thing is, uh, like you said, with cigars, there's so many things that there's not a right or a wrong answer. It's not a, oh, you've been smoking cigars how long? You should be smoking this thing. You should be smoking that because, you know, um, I recently had a Connecticut that one of my buddies at the lounge gave me here, you know, it was the Jay London Gold Series, I believe. It was a Connecticut wrapper. 
a very smooth cigar, very light, but it had this, such a natural sweetness to the tobacco. And yeah. It had a lot more flavor than I'd ever gotten out of a Connecticut wrapper. Right, yeah, yeah. And I was just amazed at how much I enjoyed that really. Because yeah. I kind of swore off Connecticut. I hadn't found one really that I liked. Um, the J London was great. This one as well, I found to be very creamy, and, and I enjoyed that Tatuaje. Um, I heard a no lot right of, answer. No, and I heard a lot of good things about the, uh, oh, what's the little ones? The nubs, the, mm. the Connecticut nubs. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Bob Senior loves the Connecticut's, and uh, again, I'm the same way. I don't necessarily gravitate toward Connecticut at all, but I've heard nothing but good things about that. So I guess there's, you know, you can find something, oh, yeah. even though it's not something you normally gravitate to, you can find something. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, cigars are respectful, and you're going to see. Again, there's always the generality that if it's lighter, it's in color, it's a lighter cigar. If it's darker in color, it's a darker cigar. That's that's great as a you know somebody new coming in to kind of help guide you. Yeah. Um, but as you start to get a little bit deeper into cigars, you know, really start to get in between the shades. You know, there's oh, Cano, yeah. there's Claro, there's uh, you know Rosado. There's there's different variations of the leaves in between just Connecticut Shade and Maduro. Right. That I mean, it, it's it's a rabbit hole once you start to go down and try to decipher all of that. Now speaking of infused and things like that, what's your opinion on like the heavily flavored cigars? I'm not a fan of. Myself. Yeah, I'm not either. Um, the tabacs I can do from time to time, and like I said, these are really good with um, with the coffee. Maybe something in the morning, but I, I tend to not do the infuse. Again, cigars are personal, though. Somebody that enjoys exactly. that, you know, the acid lines. The um, my wife loves the the the. Not the fat bottom bag, the, what is the, the one that's kind of like a pyramid-looking thing? Oh, crazy Alice. Crazy Alice, yeah. 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 No, they're the three sisters or, yep. or whatever from uh, Deadwood Estates. Is it Deadwood Estates? Is that what they call it? I know it's Drew Estates. It's State, Deadwood. But Drew Estates, Deadwood but yeah, Deadwood, yeah. That they have underneath that. Those are infused as well, uh, and she loves them. But she also, you know, she enjoys, you know, Connecticut or, or things here. Teach your own. Some people do actually talk down about people that smoke confused. No, and I mean, that's just, it's uh, bring it up because it's just another thing that's out there. You know, maybe just the plain natural flavors of tobaccos isn't for you. Maybe you want something flavored. And like Christian said, uh, acid makes a full line of all different flavors. CAOs has uh, a smaller flavored cigar section. They're out there, and if you enjoy them, you know, it, it's at least getting you into the culture, and why not? And you know what she likes a lot is the M by Maganudo. And I, I tried it when she was smoking that. And by Macanudo, they have like a coffee. I was going to say, that's a coffee yeah, scare, yeah. Yeah, it's a coffee flavored one. It, that was actually pretty good as well. And they have one that's a Maduro, so it gives it a little bit more richness to it. And I, I was enjoying that. So, nice. I mean, there, there's a lot to try. Obviously, you see it, even the way you cut your cigar, the way you light your cigar, uh, what you enjoy your cigar, cigar with, drink wise, you know, snack wise, stuff like that. Who knows? Um, but I think we, we've covered quite a bit. Here. We've covered anything. If I'm just going to add anything to it, I would say if you're just starting out, try a bunch of different things. Yeah. Don't just try one thing and judge the whole experience on your first cigar. Samplers will be your friend. Samplers, Samplers are phenomenal. Are Samplers don't, are definitely yeah, phenomenal. You may find something, oh, I kind of like this. Don't buy a box of it right out the gate because, to be honest, in a month, you may light it up and be like, this is not a good cigar. Yeah. You it's know? Exactly. I mean, it's 100% true. You're on a journey, especially when you're just starting out, try everything. Don't don't pigeonhole anything. Don't let anybody tell you what you shouldn't try. Um, hopefully, this will kind of help you steer you within maybe your first couple of selections, um, but branch out from there. Absolutely, know? absolutely. So, you got anything else you want to add? Um, I don't think I have anything else I need to add. All right, I think we covered some good stuff today. Again, please, if you if you watch this video and you have any questions, throw it in the comments. If you have any suggestions of something you want to see on a future episode, throw it in the comments. But as always, just subscribe, like the video, hit the little bell so when you see new content coming up, you're going to be the first one to see it. And thanks for joining us. As always, go Bills, and we'll see you at the nice-ass cigar store. Stay toasty. <laughs>